Hey friends, welcome to Catholic Dad Show. My name's Chris. And I'm Matt Rice, and we are a couple of Catholic dads trying to do the best we can, learning along the way from all different areas. We are certain that Catholic fatherhood can and is changing the world, so let's dive in. So I gave you guys a little teaser, learning from all different areas there at the beginning. Ah, I snuck it in there. No. Easter um, egg. So I got a little story for you. Um, you know, if you were an Aggie, you know, I'd say, I've got a little story for you, Ags. But my uh, my wife and I have had a, a, a tough time of parenting this past year. Um, just a new experience for us, having our oldest kid go to college. Um, and it's an interesting transition as they learn how to be adult and they learn more things about themselves and they're out on their own. And um, it's it's kind of actually been really cool because even though um, the grades are have not been good, um, he has learned a, a ton and he has done a ton of really, really cool things in his life. Um, like just like we, Wes and I were marveling at, at all the things he did. Like he, you know, started on, you know, uh, like a college football team, you know, for the first time ever. He moved to a town that he's never lived in before, 10 hours away from home. He drove to and from, you know, Kansas, a 10 hour drive multiple times, you know, by himself throughout the year. He flew by himself a couple of times to and from the same place, um, made new friends, took new classes, you know, changed degree programs. There's a, a whole lot of really cool wins that he had this past year. And that's something that has like changed our perspective because, you know, like it's, it's hard when your son or your child is not performing academically. And that's been the, the struggle for us, you know, is to see how hard the academic side was. And so, so overall, his grades don't reflect the overall growth. Some of the growth that you've seen was not measured by the academic grades, which for most people, that's the only metric that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, so that there, there's, I I'm, I'm perceiving that there's probably some tension here in in that reality. Yeah, for sure. You know, so, um, all of that is to say, you know, because of his grades, my wife and I, you know, had even in the like in the spring semester, we'd given him an ultimatum. You know, if you don't get above, you know, this GPA, you can't go back to college, you know, without some serious work. Um, and and he didn't, you know, he didn't respond to that. He did worse, actually, after that. Um, and so then it was like there was some real frustration, you know, with my wife and I. And we were both convinced that he just wasn't ready for college. He's not ready for college. And so. She, you know, her, she was convinced for you know some reasons. I was convinced for other reasons. And so we were dead set on, you know, all right, when he gets back, we're taking away his phone. We're taking away his laptop. We're, you know, draining his bank account because that was all meant for college anyway. And um, we're going to make him get a job. And we're going to like, and I'm, I was thinking like, he's going to be out of the house, kicked out of the house in three months. You know, he's living on his own, you know, so gone to pr- a pr- pretty far extreme, you know, as far as, um, well, you know, if you, if you can't do, if you can't make it in college, you're going to grow up on your own. Um, and th- so that was kind of where we were and, um, with a little bit of frustration, you know, and all that. And then he goes to drive home, you know, from college his the, the last time for the semester, bringing all this stuff with him. And he leaves at a time that's going to get him home at three in the morning, three in the morning the next day. So now we're frustrated on top of frustrated because now you're putting yourself in an unsafe situation. Right. You know, or in a situation where we've got to find a place for you to stay because you're too young to get a hotel room, which is weird. When you're 18, you can't get a hotel room. You're right. Um, but uh, so then I'm like, great. You know, and so I uh, I call a friend of mine who is going to be um, in like Levi is going to be in that town at around midnight, which I'm fine with him, you know, saying go and drive to midnight and staying there. So I call this friend of mine, and this is someone I've known for, I mean, we can say JP's name. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, JP's a bit fan of the show, fan of ours, um, a good friend of mine. I've known him since he was a freshman in high school. Um, but uh, I called him and I said, hey, I was really, we just ended up talking for like the first 30 minutes, you know, um, catching up and, you know, getting to hear all the cool things that, you know, it is happening in his life, like really, really awesome, like high level stuff, you know, um, at a relatively, at a, I would say a young age. Um, so really proud of that kid. I mean, he's done so much. Um, but I, uh, so I'm calling and talking to him and then, uh, I was like, well, I was calling to talk about, you know, my son, if he could stay, you know, at your house, but you're obviously not in town. Um, so he was probably just gonna have to push through. And so then JP asked, well, how is he doing? Um, cause JP's watched him grow up and everything. And, uh, and I was like, he's actually not doing good. You know, his grades are really, really bad and we're probably not gonna let him go back to college next year. 
And he's like, Matt, you know, you know that, you know, and I don't know if I'm outing JP on this one or not. He's probably not. He's pretty public with, with this stuff. But he said, Matt, you know that like my second semester, my GPA was my birthday. And I'm like, what? And just, just, just to be clear, to just as a pause, JP is a rocket scientist. Oh, that's where I was going with this after that. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Just so you guys know, like where he is right now. Yeah. Aerospace engineering, rocket scientist, like very, very accomplished in his field. Um, but his second semester at AM, a 127 or 126, something like that. Um, and, and I was like, really? <laughs> and right then it was like that glass shattering moment that it was like, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So maybe what I was going to do with my son, what I, my plans were with my kid are and, not the best thing. And just to be clear, your plans with your kid were bring him home, take all his money away. Take all his devices and communication away, and then in three months, kick him out on the street. Like it was from <laughs> from college student to homelessness in the matter of ninety days, with no hope of redemption. Like that is what I heard. Yeah, that's not exactly how it was, but it was it was very much. Uh, if he doesn't get a job, if he doesn't do these things, and that was eventually going to be the the thing. But anyway, the. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking to JP and he's like, well, you know, this happened. And I was like, well, why did your parents let you go back? You know, and, uh, and the answer, like he, his answer was like, I actually really don't know, you know, but I think they, you know, just saw that, you know, the classes that I was taking weren't the classes I was meant to be in, you know, and, and they were classes I, I, I didn't want to do well in. And so I didn't do well in. And that and again was a, a, like a shattering moment for me too, because my son, you know, changed majors halfway through his, his year, but then because of the advice from the academic advisor, which was not good advice, you know, kept some of the classes from the old major and didn't officially change majors. Um, because just in case you want to get back into that major, you decide you don't like this new one, it's going to be harder to get into it. And it was like, anyway, so then he's in two classes this whole semester that he doesn't want to be in. And he's confirmed that he doesn't want to be in. Right. And now it's just like, yeah, there's zero motivation to do well. Um, and so that was really bad advice, <laughs> but I don't know, like if it had gone the other way, maybe it would have been good advice, but it didn't go the other way. So it was bad advice. In, in the classes that he, uh, enjoyed, was there a, a performance difference? Like his GPA got dropped by these classes that he just did not care about. And yes, the other absolutely. ones he was more, okay. Yeah. 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 So it, um, but you know, so it, like the whole point of this, like conversation here is, I was not expecting, I did not call him for parenting advice. I was not expecting parenting advice. I was not expecting to learn how to be a better parent, you know, in that phone call. I was being a good parent. <laughs> I was trying to find a place for him to stay, yes. my son to stay. You know, I was being a good parent, trying to find a place for him to stay. And then I learned how to be a better parent um, from the person I was talking to. And it was, it was really cool. And it was, it was funny because JP was like, I'm sorry, I, you didn't ask for like, you didn't ask for my opinion. You didn't ask for my input. I'm like, no, thank you. Because you literally probably just saved my relationship with my son. <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't say that, but, um, but absolutely. And so, so then I, I get off the phone and I'm like, honey, we need to talk. And so then we like, we had a conversation and, sh and it really changed both of our opinion, you know, of what we wanted to do and, and where we started with our conversations with our son um, was a totally different place, you know? Um, and it was like, it just started with like, Hey, what do you want to do? Right. You know? And, and like his, his answer, you know, was, was real honest. Um, and he, he just said, he said, dad, I, I don't know what I want to do because everything that I've wanted to do when it gets hard, I want to quit. And so then it was like, like a really good, open, raw conversation. So then we could go into that. Okay. You know, and, and he didn't, he didn't like that about himself. He wants to be someone who will push through the, the, the discomfort, you know? And so, so that's where we are now in, in those conversations. And so it's a totally different place, like 180 degrees, almost maybe even more than that yeah. from yeah. where we were, where we were initially thinking we were going to be. And so that unexpected, you know, place of parenting advice, um, only happened because I was willing to be open and honest with a friend of mine. You know, um, if, if I had said, if I'd given him the Instagram answer, which is everything's fine, everything's great. Levi's coming home. I can't wait for him to get home. You know, and that's the like answer that makes me look like everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's perfect. 
um, then I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gotten that advice. He would not have been able to share that with me. You know, I right. wouldn't have even thought to share that with me. Um, so if if your child is struggling, there is a tendency to feel that that's a reflection on your parenting. Yep. And that's where the temptation to avoid vulnerability or even transparency and honesty uh, kind of comes up. And I, and I but, will tell you, I felt that this past year. You know, I felt like a failure, you know, as a parent, you know, this past year because my son wasn't thriving in academics. Um, but uh, but yeah, like in, in so being vulnerable and being willing to, you know, either even, even admit that, you know, that that's what I felt, even though that's not true. <laughs> that's a right. lie. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting to look at it because if we're talking about like unexpected uh, places for parenting tips, um, I really feel like there's a there's a spiritual connection that comes with this, right? Like I believe that that conversation you had on the phone with JP was a divine appointment. Amen. Like like it was it was a JP and God kind of tag team, and and yeah. JP might not have known. You certainly had no idea that that's yeah. what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, but but there's this this aspect of. Uh, this can sound so weird and new agey, but it's not, it's actually very Catholic, but there is a force outside of yourself that desires your success in parenting. And Amen. that force, it has a name and that name is Jesus Christ. The love <laughs> of God yep. wants you to be a better parent. And so for us to be able to say like, there might be parenting tips that exist beyond our normal means of parenting tips, right? Yeah. T- typically it's a, it's a, 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 a nice little comment here and there from your mother-in-law. You're like, there's a parenting oh, yeah. tip hidden yeah. in there. Or That's what, where we all go. That's where we all go for advice. <laughs> right, right. But, the, but, there, but there's those things. And then we have some of our you know, confidants and the people that we uh, really share intimately with. Uh, but but God is like not quitting. He is not quitting yeah. on your kids. He is not quitting on you. And so we need to stay open to that yeah. reality. Keep those well, eyes peeled. interesting, you know, because a, a parent of uh, like a teenager, my default is to talk to other parents of teenagers or talk to parents of teen- people who have had people who go to college. So that's my default is I want to talk to someone who's, yeah. who's experienced this as a parent. That's my default, like where I go to for advice. That's the norm. That's a normal place to go for advice is some a parent who has gone through this. The, where I got this advice was a person who went through it, like a child who went through it. Right. You know, and... Uh, and and I was not expecting, you know, to get that because I, like I was JP's youth minister. So I like I'm, I'm not that much older than him, but I'm what, 10 years older than him. Sure. That's my guess, you know, something like that. Um, and uh, and but I'm older than him. So he would not have been someone that I thought about calling. I mean, his kids are young. They're not even close to college. Yeah. The, the, you know, I would not have thought to call him. College versus preschool is a pretty big <laughs> yeah, gap to be getting yeah. advice from someone who's like, well, my kid's doing great in preschool. Let me tell you how this works, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's so yeah. weird. Yeah. 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 Um, but he's a lot closer to college than I am. Yep. You know, and so he's a lot closer to how it felt, you know, when he went through that. And so, and, and his experience. And so it, it's just interesting, like being open to like unexpected sources um, is is a really good thing, you know, in, in, in advice and in parenting. And sometimes dads like us, we can get pretty macho about where we get our advice from. Um, and we can get pretty boncho about our feelings, like, and, and even like expressing what I said earlier about feeling like a failure. Yeah. You know, we're not going to express that. We're going to, we're going to act like we have it all together. Um, that old fake it till you make it thing is kind of a motto for men, you know, and it's, uh, um, yeah. And you miss out on a lot of good tips and tricks by, by living that way. Matt, your son in college got pretty bad grades this semester. Are you a bad dad? No. No, that's right. Right? My daughter was playing in the yard and she stepped on something and broke her leg. Like my job is to protect and provide. Am I a bad dad? No. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I think that there's this reality that and, and underneath the shame that sometimes exists when our kids don't measure up to other people's standards is is a lie that says we are a bad dad or we are bad at parenting or we're not good at this. Instead, there's an opportunity for grace and you experience that opportunity for grace. That's the unexpected place where you find parenting tips, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like when, when, when my daughter broke her leg, like our family had to come together. It's like God actually had a parenting tip because of a broken a golly femur or something like that. It was a spike of cast. It was a hot mess. She had just learned how to use the potty. She was really young. Wow. And then she's in this cast where she can't move her legs. She's like 
just got off a horse, you know, like her, uh-huh. her legs are like locked in like this. <laughs> and we had to, we had to switch back to diapers. Anyways, it was a hot mess, but our family learned a lesson that we otherwise wouldn't have learned had that not occurred. It was, it, yeah. I mean, it was a crazy time. And this is to a degree, a crazy time. Cause you're like, we've never had a kid in college before. We don't yeah. know what we're doing. And God's uh-huh. like, I got you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, even the, the next day, um, God put someone 20 years younger than me. No. Yeah. 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 20 years younger than me, um, in front of me. And I learned from him, you know, this was someone who like I started in youth ministry with when I moved here, um, back in Brian back in 2008, you know, I've known this kid since he was in sixth grade. Wow. You know? And so like he and I like coordinated to have lunch, you know, and it just so happened to be on the day that like the, the day that Levi got in town. So Levi got like got in town at 3 a.m. And you know, later that day, um, I had this lunch. And uh, so anyway, we uh, I'm sitting there talking, you know, with with him. And I, I had watched, you know, this kid go through a really hard time. You know, the divorce of his parents, like his friends, like um, doing some really bad things. You know, his friends getting into some serious trouble, drugs, alcohol, all this stuff, like getting pretty far off the reservation. Um, but, you know, for the last five or six years, he's wor- been working at the same job. Um, he's been dating the the same girl, you know, for uh, that same time frame. They got married, you know, three months ago, and they've got a kid, you know, and uh, and and he's a he's a father now, like, and, and he's wow. he's a he's someone that his dad can be proud of. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's and it's just so different, you know, from where he was. You know, he went way far off the reservation, and and this is a kid that I like. His trajectory was prison or criminal, right? Absolutely, that was that's his what, trajectory. That's what it felt like that's yeah. what it felt like. Um, and that's the thing is like, <laughs> whatever it feels like, it, it, it's probably not true. <laughs> like it may not be true. Like that feeling of, you know, um, yeah, it may not be true, but like, so I have a relationship with this kid to where I can say, Hey, don't take offense to this, but you and all of your friends and all the mess that you guys did is far off the, you know, like as far off of the path that your dad, you, you, that y'all went from where your parents wanted you to go to where you are now gives me a lot of hope for my kids. Wow. Gives me a lot of hope for, for my son. Yeah. Um, and so it was, uh, yeah. So it, but it was so, like, it's just so funny, like where you get these little tips and glimpses and hope where God like does this stuff is completely unexpected. You know, you know, it's interesting as parents, it might be worth us doing a little Lectio with the story of Jonah. God had a desire and a plan for Jonah so much so that when Jonah walked away, literally went away from that path, God brought him to the very shore that he had called him to. And it's like, if that's the case, your son might might be a couple of steps off the path. This person that you had lunch with the other day was clearly more than a couple of steps. I don't know if they could even see the path from where they were standing at certain points. And God has a plan to bring them back. If our parenting feels off, jump inside that whale, that unexpected parenting kind of vehicle or whatever, and allow God to, to, to correct the path. Like there is not a thing like sin and death. He conquered death. Like he can conquer a difficult semester. Like God has that power. And so, um, and I don't know if that, that gives us more confidence as parents or if it, if it reaches into more humility as parents, but to know that we're not alone should give us hope as parents. And it's so interesting because um, you, you don't know everyone's story. Um, all the people that you've met, um, and especially the people you've met recently, you know, in life or whatever. Um, and even people, you know, really well, you don't know all the details of their stories. Right. Um, and if they don't know what's going on in your life, they can't share what they've learned with you, you know? And so that's where the, like being open and vulnerable and, and not this Instagram version of yourself um, with other people is, is really beneficial because like God allows us to go through certain experiences so that we can be a gift of a gift to others when they go through those same experiences. Right. You know, we get to be a gift to each other because of the experiences we've had. Um, and there's no way that the other person can be a gift if they, uh, if they don't know that you need that gift. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and so that's one of the things is like being open and honest and vulnerable. Um, and obviously, we need to have a whole different episode on this probably because there's definitely some, um, oh, what's it called? Um, 
being mentally chased, uh, psychologically chased. Um, it, that's not the right way to think about it, is it? What is it? I have no idea. Well, there's like, you don't want to like bare your heart, you know, to, you know, to someone that's in, it's pearls, inappropriate. Pearls before swine type of thing. Like you don't, yeah. you don't want to overshare in, in a way that yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You guard your heart. Yeah. So we need to have a, like a different episode about that, but the, uh, but we do need to be more apt to, I don't know, um, you know, to be willing to be looked like, looked like an idiot, you know, like, and maybe that's, maybe that's part of it is like, I, uh, I'm scared of what you might think of me, you know, that, that fear that, that I'm a bad dad. Right. If I tell you what's going on, you're going to know I'm a bad dad. Right. You know, and, and that'll be confirmed you know, in, in me saying that to you, but, but everyone, everyone, and I'm going to say this again, everyone, you know, that I've shared this with, um, has said the opposite, you know, to me, every single person has had something insightful, uplifting. Not one person has said, Oh my God, you're such a bad dad. <laughs> you know, cause like who does that? Nobody does that. Right. Um, and, but only, but I do in my head. You know, we do in our heads, like we, we have this like dialogue in our head of like what people are going to think about us and, and people really want to help. Like they, they want to not just help like in the situation, they want to help you like in your heart, you know? And yeah. anyway, I've, I've, I've been doing ministry forever, youth ministry, and there's this, um, underlying culture in youth ministry that needs transformation. It needs redemption actually. And yeah. it's that, uh, that like youth ministers and parents have a little bit of tension that exists between them. Like, oh, they're not bringing their kids because they probably don't care and blah, 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 blah. You know how many parents I've met? And I've met literally thousands of parents. You know how many parents I've met that don't want their kids to go to heaven? <laughs> Zero. 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 Yeah. Everyone wants their kid to go to heaven. Now, that priority might look a little bit different. Maybe they're not bringing their kid to youth group because they've got a situation at home. Maybe they're not bringing their kid to youth group because they want to focus on academics and they think that if they can get academically stabilized, they can get a good job and then they'll be able to journey with Christ better without having to worry about the fears or the pains of poverty, which maybe that parent experienced when they were growing up. And that's why their family only made it to church every now and then because they couldn't afford the nice clothes to be able to fit in with the, you know, all these, all these different situations. But I've never met a parent that's been like, yeah, I really want them to get that sports scholarship. I don't really care if they get to heaven. That's not important to me. Like, and everyone wants to be a better parent. Right. Um, so anyways, the the other piece, and I want you all to do an inventory as, as we're thinking about this, like Matt and, uh, JP Matt's trust level got built with JP when he mentored JP, like fatherly advice from JP is kind of strange because for a season of JP's life, you really were a father figure. Yep. in JP's life. And that's where the trust level got built up. And now you're using that trust to, to be vulnerable. And it's almost like the roles got reversed for this conversation yep. in a very anointed way, in a very beautiful way. So I want you yep. guys to all the dads out there listening to do an inventory. Like who are the people in my life that I can actually open up to more about these areas of parenting that are really difficult to bear and just to share open and honestly and see what the Lord does in those moments. Now, yep. If you're at the gas station and you go into, you know, uh, buy a candy bar, you you might not want to pour your part out to uh, heart out to that guy. But there is <laughs> someone in your life that maybe you're like, I, I trust this person, but I've never shared this aspect of my life. And you know what? Maybe God's calling me to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and paying attention to like to those moments, you know, when. Uh, yeah, when it seems like it would be a natural point in the conversation where you would share this thing, whatever it is, it's a natural point in the conversation where you would share this, but you hold it back or you feel this need to, to, to hide it. Um, and, and maybe just take a, like a hot second, you know, to, to, to say, why, like, why do I feel like I need to hide that? You know, is it because I think this person's going to step on it or is it because, um, I'm worried what they might think, you know, is it because of fear or shame? Or yeah, is it because of a lie? I'm not a good yeah. dad, so I have to hide it. Like, that's a lie. Yeah. 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 You know, and so then, it, then, it, then it'd be worth, you know, taking, taking it, opening up and, and sharing it, you know. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, anyway, so really cool. Uh, but Chris, like I've been talking a long time. We've got like a few minutes left, but like any like unexpected places where you've gotten parenting tips? Uh, yes. Um, it's interesting to see that, well, first of all, my previous experiences in youth ministry, I'm like, I'm going to be great as a dad of teenagers because I've had so much experience with all these teens. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) All these parents. I will say it does help. It absolutely helps being a youth minister. Having been a youth minister, it helps. It helps a little bit, but you're like the, the, the number of situations you face, you know, and, and, and things like that. But, uh, but it, it has been interesting because I'm a very uh, playful person and a very extroverted person and things like that. It's been interesting to see in situations where I've tried to be fun, you know, either as a coach or different things like that. We had a situation um, where it's a challenge to be able to work all the vehicle logistics of kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but because I'm playful and I'm, I'm like the fun guy or whatever, there's there's parents that are like, oh, if if you can't make it, like we can we can drive your kid to or from like they have this relationship with me to yeah. where to where there's depth and then they start saying things like hey we've noticed that your son has been running a little funny this happened like 2 years ago we've noticed that your son has been running a little funny out on the soccer field um and then i start to see that in fact that's all i saw and i was like what's going on so we took him in and he had he had a a, a real serious condition in his leg that required him to be off of everything from jumping to uh to running all the things that a boy should do for about six months before it corrected itself. Thanks be to God it corrected itself because the other option was surgery. Um, but they already knew that I would be okay to listening because I had already given them a hard time and different things like that. So there's these unexpected places where people all of a sudden are like, you enjoy your fatherhood. So I feel comfortable engaging you in your role as father. You know yeah. what I mean? Because sometimes yeah. out at the soccer fields and things like that, everyone's just like, uh-huh. you know, I'm yeah. just here for my kid. And and like, you don't talk to other parents. And I'm like, what is happening? We're all human. And so, <laughs> yeah. and so I know that sounds weird, but the unexpected place to answer your question more directly is me extroverting. I guess that would be the unexpected place is me extroverting. Well, I mean, like when you're coaching soccer, you're the coach, you're the head. Yeah. You're not expecting to get parenting advice. From the parents, you know, especially because of like in, in this current day and age, the way that people interact with each other. Um, and yeah, they, they wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't have thought to do that or they wouldn't, yeah, whatever, if it weren't for, you know, part of your personality and stuff like that, you know, but yeah, so that's a very unexpected place, you know, to get parenting advice. But the heart of that advice comes from two places. They either care about me or they care about my kid. Yep. And so even if it's advice to where it's like, yeah, we're not going to do that, right? Sometimes uh-huh. that advice is you, – sometimes you can get bad advice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and so to discern it, to filter it, and things like that. But to be able to say, thank you for sharing that. That's a great yeah. idea. We're just not going to use it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a great idea for some kid, not for my kid. We're just not going to use it. But, um, but there's this beautiful reality to at least recognize the heart that they're like, that took courage for that person to say, hey – have you considered and then to share? It's like that's the moment of parenting advice that can come from an unexpected place. So so don't yep. be afraid to be open. And even if it's bad advice, be grateful for the fact that they try to because it does. It takes a village and our society has lost it in so many ways to where yep. it's like a kid's acting up in the store. I mean, back when we were a kid, like other people could spank us. Like it's just like you're you're yeah. acting out <laughs> and like, you get flicked by some stranger and you're like, yeah. I probably was being a little too loud. You know what I mean? (laughs) And now you do that and everyone's going to arrest you and all the, I'm not suggesting that we should be able to hit other people's (laughs) kids just to be clear, but for us to be able to say, Hey, Hey, sweetheart, um, maybe screaming in the checkout aisle is not the best idea right now. Let's make some good choices. How dare you parent my kid? Like we have this mentality that someone's going to go all Karen on us. And it's just like, okay, so everyone just kind of allows mess to kind of spread. And that's not what God desires. Nope. Yeah, I've definitely parented other people's kids um, and not just people that I knew. Um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. For now, right, you're going to end up in jail. That's what's going to end up happening. Well, I'm not spanking other people's kids. I'm just saying, like, I'll tell I'll tell a kid no. Like, put yeah. that down, you know, and stuff like that. So Yeah. Stop throwing um, rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So, like, a couple things that were on my heart. Um, one was... Um, if, if you're in a, uh, like a, a tough situation, you want to talk to somebody about it, find someone, that, you know, that, you know, um, um, to talk about it. If you don't have anybody, you know, to talk to, like, I, I, 
email me, Matt at ablaze.us or Chris, Chris at ablaze.us. Yes. Um, if it's a, a mom that reaches out, we'll connect you with a mom that we know. Um, if it's dad that reaches out, we'll do the best we can um, to, to help and maybe connect you with some of the dads we know. Um, and, and maybe you just need prayer, you know, and we'd be happy to pray with you as well. Um, and so I'm going to close some prayer, but any other thoughts, Chris, before we do? No, praise God for your story. Thanks for sharing, Matt. Cool. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, we thank you for the gift of fatherhood, the gift of parenthood. We thank you for trusting us with the souls that you trust us with, um, with these young men and women. Help us to, to be good stewards of that gift, to listen to you, to follow you, to be open with all those you put in our lives so that we can learn how to be better parents, how to, to guide them to be the men and women that they're called to be in you um, Yeah, from all the different sources that you, you want us to, God. Um, and for yeah, all those parents hurting um, from whatever lies that the, the evil one is telling them, um, we rebuke those lies in the name of Jesus Christ. God, break those chains, break those lies in the name of Jesus um, so that those parents can walk free um, and, yeah, and to know who they are in you. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today at the Catholic Dad Show. You guys, go change the world in the way that you embrace this gift of fatherhood. God bless. God bless.